very obvious that this season did not go the way Raptors fans expected to go, which makes this offseason essential to the Raptors franchise they want to get back into contention. So in this video, I have a special guest with me as we talk about what the most important thing is for the Raptors heading into this summer. Let's get into it. What is up Raptors fans? Welcome to Amateur Hour Sports, the channel where we get NBA content with a focus on the Toronto Raptors. Today we have a very special guest, the first ever guest for one of our Raptors videos. We have Prab from the Warwick Report. What is up, man? Thank you for doing this. You're most welcome. Thank you for having me here. Of course, it's an absolute pleasure hosting you. Uh, your channel is doing quite well. You can check it out. The link is in the description. But uh, today we are talking about Masai Ujiri. He's been kind of uh, a hot name in the media, especially as far as the Raptors are concerned, because, uh, you know, he hasn't signed a contract yet. I said at the start of the season, in fact, in the offseason, I had a very high confidence he would return and, you know, kind of getting delayed, delayed, delayed. But now it's starting to look again like something is going to happen. And we're kind of just going to discuss our thoughts and opinions on what we think is the best thing and most important thing for the Raptors in this offseason. So, uh, I don't know, Prav, if you want to get us started, what, what do you think? I think without a doubt, it's re-signing our mastermind, our leader who's led us to the championship run and who's just been great for us this last, whatever, eight, nine years it's been, Masai Ujiri. We have to re-sign him. He's our biggest free agent, if you want to call it that. But we have to re-sign him because he's, you've seen what he's done over the years. He, the trades he makes, the players he signed, it's not just he, for Masai Ujiri to think about him is he doesn't make moves just for the sake of making a move. He'll make a move for the future. He'll plan it all out. And he, a lot of us fans don't even realize he makes plans way ahead of anyone else realizes. So I think mm -hmm. number one priority has to be signed, re-sign Masai Ujiri. Yeah, he's always like 10 steps ahead of the game. And, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I totally agree with you. It's besides Jiri. I ran a poll on my Twitter account as well. And as you can see with the with the poll here, uh, most people, the majority here, 56 percent say that Masai Ujiri is the most important thing for the Raptors in the offseason. Um, there's also the returning to the Scotiabank Arena. Uh, that's quite important as well. There's if you want Kyle Lowry to stay. So I agree. Masai Ujiri, the most important thing, and it seems like most Raptors fans will agree. And like you said, 10 steps ahead of the game and everything he does is just calculated. Like you say, um, you know, even though us as fans, like, you know, I've always, if I ever criticize Masai Ujiri for something, um, it, it's, I always finish off my criticism by saying, but regardless of what I think, I trust Masai a lot more than myself. He's got the plan and he is going to sort it out, right? Absolutely. And you know what? Your poll did say Kyle Lowry, but for those who watched that interview, Kyle Lowry said a big part of him resigning with the Raptors this offseason will depend on if Masai Ujiri comes back as well. So he comes back, Kyle Lowry comes back, and a bunch of other moves will be made as well. So yeah. So if you want Lowry, we're gonna need Masai. So if you're if you're thinking <laughs> Kyle Lowry's the most important thing, you can't have Kyle Lowry without Masai Ujiri, it seems like. And it, it it kind of looks like Kyle Lowry is a guy who wants to win basketball games he wants to he doesn't want a season like this to happen again he wants to go back into contender mode i think masai jiri thinks the same way so masai jiri had his press conference wednesday and i thought it was very enlightening and i thought it it gave some good signs uh what were your thoughts on that now i, I was actually worried about masai jiri until the news came out last week about him signing or talking about signing contract with the raptors i was worried because we he's been really quiet and it kind of reminds me of that Kawhi situation uh I know they're two different people, but he's absolutely kept a mum about his future with the Raptors. And as Raptors fans, you can't help but worry. You, you get stressed out a little bit. You know, we've lost so many key free agents the last, you know, several years. And Masai Ujiri has been uh, one to always talk about how, you know what, free agents don't want to come to Toronto. We got to stop that. And if Masai Ujiri, could you imagine if he left, that would be a bad look. But he's, he's come yeah. out today. And you know what, he's talked about how he wants to be back. It just depends on MLSE. So hopefully MLSE don't mess this up. I don't think they will. It'd be foolish on their part to not resign this side and give them oh, yeah. what he wants. And I think that MLSC has like, they're, they're, they're fully invested in, in signing Masai Jury. And I think that they will invest in getting Masai Jury back. But it, it, Masai Jury, based on what I saw from the press conference was, you know, he wants to be back, but he wants to win. And he made it pretty clear that he had no intention of getting into the playing tournament. Um, you know, pretty good quote came out of it. Playing for what? What's the point of making the plan? We want to go win a championship. He thought the best way to go win a championship was to, not make the play in. So MLSE have to be aligned with that view of 
we want to go be a winning team again if Masai is going to stay. Absolutely. And you know what? It's funny because a lot of us fans were speculating as to why all of these players were being rested and Masai just confirmed it because it was unofficially yeah. tank season. And even he, he, he may not admit it, but he was trying to tank too. He wants a high pick. And there's so many different options yeah. we can go in with the off season. So I think Masai Jerry knows what he's doing. And like, we, like he said, you know what? Playing for what? I don't think he wanted to finish as a lower seed and get knocked out in the first round. So Yeah, and I was, I was a guy who was always on the, like, let's not tank. Let's go win games. And, you know, I understand implication it could have. But, you know, I, I couldn't bear to not watch this team go win games. I thought for development, it would help to go win games. But, um, again, Masai Jiri is a lot smarter than me. Masai Jiri is an absolute <laughs> genius when it comes to building basketball teams. The fact that he took this Raptors team uh, from – what they were, you know, quite frankly, a laughing stock of the league. And over the course of a little over a decade, turned them into an NBA champion. Absolutely. And you know what? It's not even that we became champion. You just see the culture he's had around, the effect he's had. A lot of NBA players, although we may not attract key free agents, I feel like it's going to change. Let the Raptors come back in Toronto. Let them settle back. Let this COVID stuff yeah. get over. And you know what? Everyone talks about, Gay Trent mentioned it as well, how close that culture is. And that that comes back to Kyle Lowry as well. Kyle Lowry's also been a big part of this. So him and Masai Ujiri, they're both on that same page of getting a nice, uh, you know, nice culture going there. Uh, great developmental system. We've all talked about that. So they have a great culture. I don't see why players would not want to come to Toronto with uh, Masai Ujiri locked in in the long term. So Absolutely. That's kind of where I want to spin off a little bit into what sort of implications will this Raptors franchise have if Masai Jiri does not return for next season? So, you know, as important as we think it is, why is it so important? Like, what will happen if he doesn't come back? Well, we know for a fact that Kyle Lowry's not coming back because he's already mentioned he has a really close relationship with Masai Jiri and... You know what? People yeah. don't realize it's not just the fact that Masai Ujiri leaves. It's going to have other impl implications as well. Assistant Bobby Webster is probably going to be the GM. They're going to have to bring in new guys. And we know that's the case. When new guys come in, they like to bring in their own guys. So we may lose some scouts. We may lose some, you know, I wouldn't say we're getting rid of Nick Nurse, but other staff in the Raptor system we may not know about. So it changes everything. It changes the culture and it changes pretty much just everything what the Raptors have been the last, you know, several years of that strong culture being proud of being a Raptors fan, the hardworking next man up mentality as well. So. And I, and I fully agree. I think that what makes the Raptors as good as they have been recently is the scouting. And it's been the sort of trades that Messiah Jr. has orchestrated because right now we don't get free agents. We don't get the top free agents. I think that is bound to change at some point. And I think that Masai Ujiri leaving would completely set back any sort of, you know, we're kind of building up. I, I think we're close. I think we're getting close. I just think we need that one free agent to break that stigma against coming to play in Toronto. And I think Masai Ujiri is doing a great job of building up the culture, as you're mentioning. And it's a good point I wasn't thinking about. Masai Ujiri leaves. Scouting is one of the biggest things. If Masai Ujiri leave and bring over the scouts, that have made this Raptors team so, so successful, drafting late first round picks, building them up to be stars. OG Ananobi, 23 overall. Uh, Siakam, 27th overall. Norman Powell, 46 overall. Fred Van Vliet, undrafted. All these guys coming out based on the scouting. Do we lose that as well with Masai Jiri leaving? He is, quite frankly, he is the franchise. And the franchise, I am seriously worried about what it goes back to without Masai Jiri. Absolutely. And you know what? There's other things to consider as well. We've always talked about how the Raptors don't really, well, I mean, don't attract free agents. How would this look on the Toronto Raptors and particularly on the MLSC, uh, their image of, you know what? They can't sign free agents. They can't even sign their own GM because if they don't agree to terms with Masai Ujiri. So it'd be a really bad look. And I think it, we have to re-sign him. It, it's not only a bad look, but also, as I've mentioned, when you get new people in, the direction of the team changes. Maybe they decide to blow it up. Maybe they decide to trade some of these guys. We don't know how the players are going to react. Maybe some yeah. of the players say, you know what? We don't want to work. We don't want to play under this new management. They don't like it. Maybe they request a trade. So we don't know what's going to happen with that as well. Even like the, the lower tier free agents that the Raptors do sign, a lot of that is down to uh, development and Masai Jiri. I know like Alex Len, that didn't work out, but he did say when he signed with the Raptors that one of the biggest reasons that he signed with the Raptors is the development system that they have in place. And I think a lot of guys find that attractive, you know, guys who aren't quite getting the most out of their careers, like maybe a guy like Marvin Bagley in the future, just guys who have untapped potential that they're not reaching. 
the Raptors look like a pretty prime destination for them because they know the Raptors development team is going to work with them and try to harness that potential that they have maybe uh, struggled to get to. And, you know, guys like Marvin Bagley, I think fit in that category category. Definitely. And I think Kyle Lowry as well as a guy who fits into that category, he was a little bit of a, a non-factor with Houston and he comes into the Raptors and completely changes the trajectory of the franchise and um, influential and in building up the team to go win a championship, the greatest Raptor of all time. And a lot of these things don't happen without the system, the coaching staff, the just this, the whole staff in general that Masai Ujiri puts in place. So with all of that in mind, do you think that based on what you've seen, based on the news reports you've seen, do you think that Masai Ujiri will be with the Toronto Raptors organization at the start of next season? Um, I mean, initially, as I mentioned, I was a little bit worried because we didn't hear any news from Masai Ujiri. We didn't hear any talks from him returning to the Raptors. But this interview definitely helped me. I think without a doubt, the only reason I don't see him coming back is if MLS, he really screws this up. And to be honest, I don't see them screwing this up. We know they're committed to a championship run. We've seen them go over the salary cap and into the luxury attack when we attacks when we had Marcus Solid Baca. Why all those guys. So I don't see why Masai Ujiri would not want to return to the Raptors. In the interview as well, he got really emotional talking about the Raptors, saying he'd go to war oh, with yeah. these guys every single day. So I don't nice see, see why. Absolutely. It was it was great to see as a Raptors fan. I don't see why he would return. What do you think, Jacob? Yeah, I agree. Uh, Vegas has met about 66% chance of returning. I like those odds. And again, it's down to MLC to make the right decision. And I think since the bit of overhaul and ownership over the last decade uh, in MLSC, you know, they've done a good job of building up teams. They built up an MLS champion. They've, they're on track to build up a really good Blue Jays team. Uh, they're on a really good track to build up a successful Toronto Maple Leafs team who just are about to get started uh, with their playoff run. And they, they know the value Masai Ujiri has to this franchise. And they are going to do what is necessary to keep Masai. And I'm sure Masai will have a lot of input in, in any sort of meeting as to what he wants from them. And I'm sure, again, they are going to be fully willing to accept uh, the terms for him. It's not just necessarily about the money but for Masai. He mentioned that. It's about what, what the franchise wants and what MLSC wants out of the franchise. And if that's something that Masai can completely resonate with, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. So uh, kind of last thing, if Masai is back, we're going to assume he comes back. What does this off season look like for the Raptors? I think we have to find a clear path of which way we're going now. We heard Masai Ujiri talk about championship run. And so it's, it's, I think it's guaranteed to assume the Raptors are not blowing it up, not retooling. Well, retooling, yes, but not tanking again. So I can definitely see the Raptors trying to attract free agents. Now the free agent market isn't all that great. So it definitely have to be through a trade. We'll see what trade pieces he's looking at, what players he may be looking to trade in the offseason. But I think definitely you have to retool the roster to make it a lot better because we've seen this season as talented as we are. We're just not great enough to make the playoffs now. There's a lot of factors going into that as well. But there's definitely some issues with the Raptors roster construction right now. So that's definitely one thing he'd have to fix in the offseason. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like this team this season had enough talent to get into the playoffs. I think that. Uh, the COVID mini outbreak within the team just destroyed that. We are the four seed. We're 17 and 17. Five players missed five games. We all lose all five of those games. We just go on a downward spiral. Masai Jiri decides to tank. And I think that this already talented team is about to get a top 10 pick picked by Masai Jiri and his staff. They're going to get a player that fits into the system or they're going to get, if they end up with a top four pick, they're going to get, I think, a generational talent and with that, hopefully strengthening some weaknesses in the offseason. We need some better uh, top-heavy parts of our bench. We, I think we need a better like seventh and eighth man for the rotation, maybe a, a better center. But if not, I'm happy with Ken Birch. And I think that Masai understands all this. Again, he knows more than us. We're going to trust him. <laughs> and I have, full faith, I have full faith that he is going to get it right. He's going to set it right and get us back in the playoffs next season. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Masai is the man to lead us to the next championship and I, I don't honestly see the Raptors being that far away from being a championship we saw and someone mentioned this online but when you take, think about the Spurs organization they didn't win you know a lot of championships but when they did I mean they did win it but they didn't win consecutive championships but when they did it was a span of three four years so I don't see why the Raptors can't be back next or following season so it's a very good point it's a very good point and I think we'll end on that uh, once again really appreciate uh, Prab of the Werich report uh, go check 
We appreciate him being here. Go check out his channel. The link is down below. Get this man to 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> he absolutely deserves it. Uh, doing well, making Raptors content like myself. And uh, any closing remarks for yourself? Uh, just thank you for having me here. Appreciate it. Obviously, big fan of yours. So um, thank you for thank doing you. this video. It's great doing this collab. And until uh, next time, guys, thank you for yeah, watching this. More to come in the future. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in.